Hey everybody, this is Brian at Obedia, and today we're going to take a look at how to make use of software synthesizers and plugins in Cakewalk's Sonar X1 digital audio workstation. I'm using X1 Producer, but this is pretty much the same for all the other versions of Sonar, so you should be okay to follow along with me at home with whichever version you've got. This is real easy to do, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing that we need to do when we're going to start using software synths in, in Sonar is we need to first take a look at our plugins, make sure that they're set up right. So we're going to click on Utilities and then click Cakewalk Plugin Manager. This is going to open the Plugin Manager for Sonar. And this is going to give us access to lists of all of our plugins that are installed on our system. And we can see here we've got DirectX plugins, VST audio effects, instruments, VST instruments, things like that. So this is going to give us a list of all of the plugins which have been installed, registered, and are listed as working properly with Sonar. Sonar does a scan of your plugins when it opens up in order to make sure that they are operating correctly. Now, if you want to set up some of your own VSTs, if you install them in a different directory than what Sonar is looking at, or something like that, let's say you install a VST and it's not showing up in your list, you want to take a look at VST configuration right here. Click on the Options button. This is going to give you the VST scan paths. Now the VST scan paths are where you're going to tell Sonar to look for VST instruments on your system. So it's real easy to add another location and you can add as many as you would like. Simply click on the Add button and this will open up this Browse window. And here you simply need to browse to the location in which you have installed your VST plugins. Hit OK and that location is going to be added to the list right here. And when you've done that, you can go ahead and hit OK. And then what you're going to want to do is click on Scan VST Plugins. And this will rescan all of your VSTs. And it'll make sure that everything is working properly. Now you can also do things here like exclude a plugin uh, because sometimes maybe you don't want to have all of the plugins listed. You can also create plugin layouts right here. And a plugin layout can be really useful to allow you to kind of sort your VST plugins and other plugins into various layouts depending on how you want to use them. So if you click on the new plugin layout button here, this will allow you to start creating new plugin layouts. Now all you need to do is find plugins you want to add to this layout and then click on add plugin. As you go down the list here, you can add all of your plugins. You can add separators or folders, various things like that in order to organize the plugins. And then you can go ahead and save this plugin layout. Click on save. It'll ask you where you would like to save that plugin layout. And I'll just go ahead and call this test. And then I need to give it a file name. I'll call it test as well. And then I'll go ahead and hit save. This is going to save my plugin layout and I can browse all the different layouts right here. So this allows me to organize all my plugins, which can be really useful when you're right in the middle of producing and you want to have access to only specific plugins. After you've done all of these setups, go ahead and press the close button. And now you're going to be back inside of Sonar. So the next thing that we want to do, of course, is we want to insert a soft synth into our project. So we're going to click on insert. We're going to scroll down to Soft Synth. Now this is where plugin layouts can come in useful. You're going to notice that right here, if I scroll to plugin layouts, I have right here, here's my plugin layout for test. And after I've clicked on test, I need to click on insert again, go to Soft Synth, and now you're going to notice that now I'm only going to see the plugins which I designated to be inside of the layout which I created earlier. So this way you can shift between layouts for your plugins. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the default all plugins because I want to see all of my plugins. So again, let's go ahead and insert a soft synth. We'll click insert, go to soft synth. Now we can just scroll down and we can choose from our available VST plugins. I'm going to go ahead and make use of Native Instruments FM8. This is one of my favorites. So after you click the name of the plugin which you would like to add to your project, you're going to get the Insert Soft Synth Options box. And this is very useful, and you're going to notice the option for Ask This every time. This is worth keeping checked because the Soft Synth Options box 
is where you can enable or disable some of the things that you might use when you instantiate a soft synth. Now typically you're going to be okay to simply leave simple instrument track checked and also synth property page. Synth property page is real good to leave checked because if you leave that checked you're going to get the properties page or the interface for your plugin after you hit OK. And I like to be able to see the interface for my plugin real quickly uh, before I get to work so I always leave that checked. So now that you've got these two primary options set, simple instrument track and synth property page, go ahead and hit OK. Now immediately you're going to notice that you're going to have a track created right here for your soft synth and then here is my soft synth which I have just opened. And of course as long as I have an external MIDI keyboard controller hooked up I will be able to also play this instrument using my MIDI keyboard. <laughs> So again, it's very easy now to begin recording some MIDI inside of Sonar. After I have decided on, let's say, a preset that I would like to use for my plugin, I'll go ahead and just scoot it out of my way. And now all I need to do is record enable this track, just as I would record enable an audio track. And I'll go ahead and record enable this track, mute my other audio tracks that I've got here, and then I'll start recording to show you guys how easily we can record some MIDI. Some MIDI. So let's go ahead and hit record right here. So you can see now I've recorded some MIDI. In fact, I've recorded a couple different MIDI clips right here because I had my loop recording enabled. So now I can make some edits to this MIDI by accessing the Piano Roll Editor, and I can do that by simply double-clicking on my piece of MIDI right here, and then I'm going to get the Piano Roll Editor, and this will allow me to make some edits to the MIDI notes which I have previously played. So this will allow me to move notes around, elongate them, and various things like that. Now I also have access to a very cool feature in Sonar and that is the Step Sequencer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how we can use the Step Sequencer to quickly program a new MIDI part for our software synthesizer which we've opened up here in Sonar. So in order to access the Step Sequencer we need to click on Views and we're going to click on Step Sequencer. Now you should make sure that you have your track currently active uh, which you have your software synthesizer enabled on because that's how you're going to be able to see the step sequencer. So let's go ahead and move our soft synth out of the way right now and you'll notice that when I selected step sequencer from the views menu I got this step sequencer open for me right here and I can scroll and take a look at the notes that I have access to. Now if I click on one of the buttons right here uh, which is next to one of these notes I have a section here where I'm going to be able to edit the velocity of these programmed notes. So the step sequencer is going to give me access to a quick 16 step button sequencer which I can use for sequencing a drum part or a synth part rather than having to program those parts using an external MIDI keyboard. So what I can go ahead and do now is I can simply click on steps here on the A3 section of my step sequencer and this is going to create a note for each of these times that I press the button here. So, so you're going to notice that now I have a new MIDI region created and this MIDI region is going to be showing the data which I have entered here in my step sequencer. Now I have op the option right here to actually change the velocity of each of these notes that I have entered. You're going to notice they're all the same. If I want one to play a little bit louder or one to play a little bit softer, I can use my mouse right here, click, and it's going to turn into the pen tool, which then will allow me to create new velocity lanes for each of these notes uh, that I have entered here in my step sequencer. And this is really useful because as I select each of these new different steps, this is going to program some new MIDI notes here in my piano roll section in this MIDI clip which I have here in Sonar. And now if I take FM8, show the interface for it and start playing, you're going to notice that the step sequencer is playing FM8.
So that's pretty cool because this gives me a quick and easy way to be able to program parts into my software synth without having to use a keyboard. I know a lot of folks are really used to programming MIDI using step sequencers and this is a really cool thing in Sonar that you get access to and it's built into Sonar so you're going to have access to this from the ground up. So this is just an, a basic overview of how we can make use of a software synthesizer inside of Sonar. You can, of course, get much more in-depth into the controlling of your software synths, and the controls that you have access to are all going to depend on your software synth that you are using and who developed it and the options which it has for being played back inside of Sonar. As always, I hope that this has been useful to you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please get in touch with me. My email is brian at obedia.com. You can get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obediatutor and find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obediatutor. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy music making to you guys and take care.